there are a lot of very variations on the theme of melanoma and some of these get particular names uh, such as nevoid melanoma small cell melanoma balloon cell melanoma and and the like and the importance of these terms is really it's just to draw to your mind how easy it can be to make a mis a misdiagnosis now for example nevoid melanoma is really a melanoma that looks like a nevus and that's all that, that that's all there is to it it doesn't imply anything in a biological sense or in a treatment sense or in a prognosis sense it's just you need to be aware that sometimes melanomas can at first glance look like a nevus now the problem is a little bit more complicated than that because uh, it used to be taught that you got your nevi when you were an adolescent or in your 20s and that anything that developed after that was not going to be a good, particularly good news and uh, to some extent that's true but on the other hand elderly patients sometimes do develop new nevi that are quite benign so you have to remember that as well but the prototypical nevoid melanoma is something that develops generally in the elderly patient. And the, the commonest appearance is of something that's got a verrucous or a warty appearance. And this, this, this low power view is a, a perfect example. Uh, that, that they sometimes arise on the scalp. So if you get a clinical history of a patient in their 70s with a new warty lesion on their head and it's melanocytic then you can be pretty sure it's actually going to be a melanoma although you you may have to look at it a, bit, a little bit more carefully but even at this magnification you see that there are there are clues and um, the first clue is it's verrucoid so that's that, that's part one and then the second clue, when you look at it, is it's absolutely solid blue. There are no, there's no spaces in between. So those cells are expanding the papillary dermis uh, and completely filling it. So you have this blue, warty tumor. If you know it's melanocytic, that makes you, you're even closer to the diagnosis of melanoma before you even look at it more 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 uh, closely now if we enlarge this slightly and uh, whoops uh, uh, sorry I'll just bring that down I have to, it's gone now here we go I'll bring that down and one you see you don't you don't we you hardly re really need to look at it any more than that because it shows all the features of nevoid melanoma. The, uh, the, whoops, yeah, that there's fine, actually. The papillary dermis is absolutely stuffed full of cells, stuffed full, and the epidermis is stretched. So you've got this almost fenestrated acanthosis of the epidermis, and all the dermal papillae and the superficial dermis are stuffed full of little blue cells. And what you can see is even at this magnification, the blue cells at the bottom are exactly the same as the blue cells at the top. So there isn't any maturation. So you've got a, a, an exuberant melanocytic proliferation that's not showing maturation. Now we'll look at that a bit more, more, more closely. Um, you you can see at, at the top um, junctional junctional act activity, and there's a little pagetoid cell there, and a bit more there. And I think if we wander around, we'll we'll find other features uh, that are worrying for for uh, the in the uh, junctional or the in situ component. You, you can see there there's tremendous thinning or attenuation of the epidermis. In fact, the epidermis is virtually replaced underneath the parakeratosis with a, uh, a nevoid pop, 
population. So here we can see uh, evidence of uh, in situ melanoma, and then obviously uh, the next thing you notice are these great big nests. You shouldn't have expansile nests in a benign nevoid condition. The, these nests are all expanding into each other and they're completely obliterating the dermal connective tissue. So that's a that's a that that's another diagnostic feature that tells you this is a melanoma. And if we look a bit more close, whoops, look a bit more closely at the uh, at the site at the nuclear detail, you can see that the nuclei are a little bit pleomorphic. Uh, they're vesicular, and they've all got fairly prominent new new nuclei. And if I if we just wander down through the depths of the lesion, you you can see. Whoops! No, I'll have to go back to a lower a lower part to to uh, find that. If we look down in here, which is sort of at the base of the lesion, we'll see that uh, you see right down at the bottom the nuclei. If anything, the nuclei are actually worse. It's kind of the reverse of maturation. Yes, yes. it is. This is this is exactly well, that's a good term. We'll say that there's reverse maturation. The the nuclei are are are, are not showing any. In, in, in a banal nevus, if this was a banal nevus, at the top you'd have type A nevus cells. Down at the bottom, if this was a nevus in an old person, you'd probably have type C nevus cells where they look neural. And they'd at least be type B where there'd be hypochromatic nuclei and no cytoplasm. But these, these nevus cells or these melanocytes are vesicular. If you like, they're type A mm -hmm. cells. Uh, so you add all that up, and, and that this is what it is. This is a nevoid melanoma. Now I'm not going to go gazing looking for my target triggers, but uh, they 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 will be there. If not in this section, they'll be present in the next section. And I don't think you need to do any immunohistochemistry on this case. It's uh, that's just what it is. A lot of people get on search and then they think, gosh, I need to do something. So what you could do if you really wanted to, you could do an HMB 45 and you'd find probably all of this infiltrators expresses HMB 45. You could do a key 67 and you'd find a, you know, a very brisk positivity or you probably would. I find cycling D1 is much better because mm -hmm. it doesn't stay in the lymphocytes, so you can get a more clear idea of what is uh, what is expressing that uh, uh, antibody. Is it diffuse expression or patchy? I've, I've not used that really. I, did, I don't. Uh, have it doesn't really. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just it's too much of it. Mm. Basically, in, in a banal nevus, um, you'll get. I, I I think you can get keys. I think banal nevi can still be mitosing, sure. and so superficially you might find you might find an odd mitotic figure, and you might find cyclin and key sixty seven expression, but not very brisk, just here and there in the top. But if it's if it's if it, if you see it throughout, or if you see stuff at the bottom proliferating, well, that shouldn't be. So that's uh, that's a that's a nice example of what I would call a good nevoid melanoma.